There are 7 million people in Hong Kong, 280,000 millionaires and 25 billionaires, and they all love property. Hi, I'm Tim Murphy, your host for Buying Asia, the definitive guide for property in the Asia-Pacific region. In each episode, we'll review every country or city, allowing you to decide whether it's a go or no-go. To do this, we'll look at taxes, currency, mortgages, rentability, saleability, and finally, whether it's even legal to buy. They said in 1997 it was the beginning of the end for Hong Kong as the empire closed down. How wrong they were. Last year, Hong Kong was the freest market in the world for the 16th straight year. The impact of China is getting bigger and bigger on this market. I absolutely love this place. For me, this place is the center of the universe. No matter where you turn to in the city these days, there's another real estate record being broken. With mainland money coming in and the Hong Kong government restricting its land sales, that means that property here is some of the most expensive on the planet. Right now I'm with Gary, who's head of global strategy for HSBC. Gary, you've been in the region a long, long time. Tell us what's happening in Asia at the moment. Well, this is the boom region of the world. I mean, we've got China that's growing like 10%. We've got India that's growing 8%. All the other markets, Hong Kong, Singapore, growing 4 to 5% a year. You know, it's, it's the up and coming place in the world, no doubt about it. And what, what's Hong Kong's place in all of this? Well, Hong Kong and Singapore too is, is the sort of center of trade, of services. It's where the foreigners come if you want to do business in China, if you want to do business in the region. It's a lot easier to be based in Hong Kong than it is in sort of tougher places like Beijing or Shanghai. Sure, and we've obviously got the legal system here, we've got English-speaking market. And it, yeah. Hong Kong functions very well. The infrastructure's great, the airport's one of the best in the world. Yeah. The government functions in English, everything's online. It's just a very easy place to live and to do business. In terms of the future, I mean, where do you see Hong Kong going? I mean, can it continue to be as competitive as it is now, do you think? I think it can get even more competitive. Um, you know, China is going to open up more to the world. The Chinese currency, the renminbi, currently you can't use it outside of China. Hong Kong is going to be the first place where you'll be able to have accounts in renminbi, your trade in Hong renminbi. Some of that's happening already. So yeah. China really needs Hong Kong to continue to to its process of growing. No doubt about it. And, and I guess de facto, then, for people buying real estate here, you know, that, that just makes it look even rosier. You know, people are still going to be flocking here. Big companies, some of the biggest companies in the world, uh, run their Asian operations out of this market, and, and you don't see that changing. Yeah, and if you want to be based in China, I mean, Hong Kong is part of China. The, the connections to the rest of China from here are as good as they are, or better than they are from Shanghai and Beijing. Um, and not only are the expats from the Western world coming here, of course, mainland Chinese want to live here and be based here as well. So we have 18 million mainland Chinese visitors to Hong Kong every year. Amazing. And a lot of those people want to buy an apartment, want to live, want to invest in this place as well. Fantastic. So that all sounds very good for both the economy, but also for property in this part of the world. So let's now look a bit more at the property market. When I first arrived here over a decade ago, the area known as mid-levels was the place to live. Due to a massive escalator, you can be at the office in no time at all. And since then, a district known as Soho has sprung up filled with restaurants, bars and boutiques. The price of flats here has skyrocketed too, forcing even well-to-do expats to rethink where they're going to live. For landlords, these are the boom years. If you want to buy, it's actually never a bad timing. You, if you want the property, buy it now. Because always, after a while, it's getting up, even though it goes a little bit down, after a while it goes up. So it's not a, a, a straight, it's versatile, and it goes always a little bit upwards. Most of Hong Kong's business community work that way in Central, and half of them live this way in mid-levels. And it's serviced by this massive escalator, which is the biggest covered escalator in the world. So let's take a walk and have a look. More than 60,000 people ride the free 800 meter long escalator a day, taking about 20 minutes to walk from the office all the way up to some of the city's most expensive real estate developments. So as we go up this escalator, we've got two or three or four even different areas of Hong Kong where people live, depending on what they want to spend on rent and what they want to spend on buying the property. Average price is around here about $2,000 a square foot US. So you can imagine a thousand square foot apartment, which is actually very big for Hong Kong, is around the two million mark. But you can easily spend a lot more money there. And people will live in any of these streets all the way up to Robinson Road, where I first moved to when I came to Hong Kong 13 years ago. To get an idea of the size and the possibilities for apartments in the area, I caught up with top interior designer Winnie Clark to see an example of what can be achieved. So on Elgin Street in Soho, which is a very trendy part of Hong Kong, 
Winnie, talk me through where we are. Well, we're in the bottom of the escalator, sort okay. of in the middle of the Soho. OK, yeah. middle of Soho. And look at this, Yeah. how old the building is and new. This is your place, is it, you yeah, renovated? it's my baby. And okay. it's, you can see when you're inside. Come on, get me in. Let's have a yeah. look. Give me a sense of what this place was like when you started. I mean, you know, it's it's absolutely gorgeous, but what, what was it like? It was 50 years old uh, flat, and we, we modernised it, because uh, with the new window, as you see, and the new bathroom, and the, you know, everything new. As I learned, a little over 50,000 US dollars was spent on renovating the apartment. The apartment itself cost 346,000, and now its value is about 513,000 US dollars. So there we go, under 3 million Hong Kong dollars uh, in the heart of Soho, a 60-year-old building. Yeah. Now, these people have probably made 25, 30% return on yeah. capital already. Yeah. But more importantly for them, they've got somewhere great to come at the weekend. Yeah. They can go and have a bit of Argentinian food or a pizza and uh, after getting the car and drive all the way back home, they can, they can just stay here for the night. Most would definitely agree that this city is always changing and transforming itself, and fast. To find out the hows and whys, I decided to go to one of the city's major real estate brokers. I'm with Enik Chan, Executive Director with Knight Frank. Now, Enik, you've been here 25 years. Yes. What's changed in the market in that time? Well, actually, it's more than 25 years now. I came back home in 83. At that time, the interest rate was very high, and also there's also negotiation about changing sovereignty. The market was quite low at that time. But it recovered since 83, and up to 89, when there's more crisis in China, so the market went down a bit. But since then, we also have a stable January rising market. Of course, the disease SARS was devastating in 2003. But since then, Hong Kong's real estate market has been practically unstoppable, even rebounding quickly after the recent world financial crisis. What's driving all this demand on prices? Um, there's quite a few factors. I mean, fundamentally, Hong Kong is very small. I mean, the land which you can build on is no more than 24 24% of the entire territory. Also, there's a lot of hot money coming from China. So let's just go, let's backtrack there. So you can only build on 24% of, of, the the of the land in Hong Kong. Hong Kong. So there's very limited supply of land. Although the government is trying to um, expand the new towns, but that takes a lot, long, long time for the local consultation and infrastructure developments. So in terms of residential, um, it's very difficult to build in urban areas. So just to clarify here, the Hong Kong government has the reins on supply in the market, which is very effective, and it reduces the amount of supply in the market. It's not like other parts of the world where land is just sold willy-nilly. They absolutely keep yes. their arms around it, which restricts the supply and therefore keeps the price at a nice, uh, nice there, level. There's always criticism whether the government should release more land. OK, the government has responded to that. So now they're no longer relying solely on what we call the application system. So if you're a small investor, you want to buy an apartment and rent it out. What, what should they be looking for? If they can be looking for service apartments in sort of core central areas, which is very popular among expats, where the entertainment, the office area, or bingo in the Lai Kui Fong area. Small blocks, which the rent goes very well, something like 30,000 a month for a small flat, say about 400 square foot. OK, there you go, from the horse's mouth, buy small units in core centres. Seems too good to be true, doesn't it? Really appreciate your time today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jim. I'm going to go and look at some properties now. And it helps that the transportation system in Hong Kong makes it easy to get around. Taxis are plentiful, there's a clean underground train system known as the MTR, and if you're not in a hurry, there's a classic Cross Harbour Star Ferry. Everybody needs to buy property at some point in their life, and it can be extremely profitable. I'm going to show you how to do it the Asian way. And when buying Asia returns, a look at what makes the city so unique. Of the top 10 biggest buildings in the world are in Asia. We're urbanizing at a rate of 40 million people a year. That's almost the size of Spain. And we're building 20,000 new homes a week. And if I don't get knocked over by a tram, I'm going to show you how to invest in Asian property. Modern high-rises to local dusky markets, Hong Kong's got absolutely everything. And believe it or not, people actually invest in apartments like this. What I'm about to show you are two pieces of real estate in two prime areas. An area on the right is called Wan Chai and well-known bustling Causeway Bay. What was once pretty dull has been transformed by a couple of Hong Kong residents who had vision and a bit of imagination. I'm going to take this home, I'm going to have blowtorch pig's head for my dinner.
Duncan's been in Hong Kong for two years as a part-time property investor. Duncan, where are we? We're in the heart of uh, Hong Kong. We're between uh, Wan Chai and Causeway Bay. And this is your place, is it? It's one of them, yeah, up, uh, up there at the top. Shall so we have a look then? Come on inside. So here we are. It's a nice and light and area. It's small, but you know, it's all that I would need if I was a, a young professional. And... Just tell me, what kind of person rents a place like this? Well, I think before, places like this would have been uh, lived in by little old ladies. And what I'm trying to do is to put in a fitted kitchen and a fitted bathroom and, and change the demographic a bit. Sure. So how long ago did you buy it? Two years. OK, so talk me through the numbers then. Come on. How much? Uh, so, 200,000 US to buy, about 15,000 to renovate. That, all that stuff's pretty cheap here because, you know, cost of labor is relatively cheap. Yeah. All the materials come from China, that's cheap as well. Right. Um, and the rental now is about 1,500 uh, US a month. So that equates to about 7% uh, yield. So okay. that's pretty good. And what's the mortgage? How much are you paying on your mortgage? Mortgage is 70% uh, mortgage, and interest rates are less than 2%. Yeah. So uh, it, the rental income more than covers the, the full mortgage. That's the 12 year okay. repayment mortgage, interest and repayments. So the irony of a place like this is you'd probably be paying two, three times this if you're buying a brand new apartment in Hong Kong. Duncan's come and found a small, cheap apartment. He spent 15,000 US dollars renovating it and he's getting a cracking yield. So, you know, you have to sort of look past what you see on the outside and the, the smelly markets and then look at the investment opportunity. I think this is great. It's the classic gentrification story, you yeah. know, where you've got uh, somewhere which is undervalued in the markets. And if you look at the, the fundamentals, and obviously location is important to that, then, you know, there's a deal to be had. Final question. What's it worth now, two years on? <laughs> I reckon it's worth about 300,000 US, but as I say, it wipes its face, so I'm not looking to sell it anytime soon. I think the future's well, mate, good. he's buying the coffees. <laughs>
Okay, so I bought this apartment in 2007 and it completed in 2009. It's 521 square feet and one bedroom, which believe it or not is about the typical size of a Hong Kong apartment. Now the thing is about this apartment, admittedly I bought it in 2007, which was about the worst time to buy any property anywhere in the world or any investment for that matter. But the reality is the Hong Kong property market has done extremely well in the last couple of years, yet I'm still sitting on a fairly sizable loss here. I'm about 20% out of pocket. I paid 3.6 million Hong Kong dollars and it's now worth about 3 million. And that just goes to show you that new products, new properties in this market might sparkle, but they don't always shine. When we return, if real estate in Hong Kong ever loses some of its luster, I'll show you why heading out to the countryside may be a terrific alternative. And now we move from Hong Kong Island to a sleepy village in Clearwater Bay. Very different from what we experienced in Hong Kong Island, but more and more people are moving out for peace and tranquility. And who can blame them? Just a half hour outside of the city by bus or car, many parts of the area known as the New Territories have a newfound appeal for expatriates and wealthy local families in Hong Kong. Once seen as a sleepy backwater and home to local village families, the area still retains some of those elements, but with more and more modern conveniences available. You can get a lot more space, for a lot less money out here. Oh, wow. What a difference from the last place, Winnie. Yes. So I reckon this lounge is about the same size as the exactly. place that we just went to. Yeah, exactly. And we're about 27 minutes from where we were previously, so really not that far away. Tell me what the idea was behind this place, Winnie. Well, the idea is like we have to do this uh, more like uh, more classic and more timeless kind of uh, design so because my client is brought up like in a more like east midwest so they like the more european style okay Versus so european but not the sort of modern art deco a little bit more traditional yeah, more traditional more timeless Oh, look at the size of the kitchen. Yeah. That's unbelievable. It's a dream kitchen. You know, I people in you. Hong Kong, the average size square foot of an apartment in Hong Kong is 600 square feet. You think about that, the average for a family. If you actually come in here, I reckon this is about 600 square feet. So this is really luxury living in Hong Kong. But you've done a great job, Winnie. Look at yeah, this kitchen. Lovely. So, so what, was the, what was the idea with this? Talk me through this. Well, the idea is um, my client loves to cook and this is really important for him and then all the family, you know, they spend more time in the kitchen these days yeah. than in the living room. So okay. the kitchen is really the main focus in the whole living Can you see that? That's the biggest omelette in the world. Yeah. It's like a pterodactyl omelette. Absolutely amazing. Yeah. Well, Winnie, thank you very much for showing us around. Yeah. It's a truly amazing home. With the average size of an apartment in Hong Kong being just 600 square feet, one can clearly see the value for moving out to the Hong Kong countryside and renovating an old village home. Plus, there's an interesting cultural blend between older Chinese traditions and a way of life combined with a demand for Western-styled convenience. So people are increasingly moving out to Clearwater Bay and Sai Kung in the new territories to get some peace and tranquility. Actually, it's also about half the price of Hong Kong Island. So I'm here with David Crane and he's taking me around a number of properties in the area. So where are we going first? I think we'll go down to Po Tayo, shall we? Have a look at a spectacular sight. And what's the story? I mean, people that are coming from Hong Kong Island to look at the, these properties at the weekend, so you're showing them around all these places. Are, they, are they surprised when they get here? Absolutely, because half of them haven't even been off the island. So I come out here at weekends and uh, I'm a bit of a tour guide. You know, I've got to say, here's the horse riding stable, here's some country park walks, here's some restaurants that you can eat at, here's a supermarket, parking shop, you know, you can get food out here. And it's all a bit of an eye-opener for them. And are they, get, are they convinced by it all? I mean, when they see what they can get and what life's like, are they convinced? Yeah, because then what happens is they talk to their friends and they realise that quite a few people do live out here and they have great lifestyle and they're very close to Central and they live in work, live out here at weekends and live in Central during the week. Wow. Fancy a bit of lunch? Look at these boys, you see? Hey, Cuttlefish. Squid. And once those former city dwellers do move here, they renovate. And as an example, can turn an old village dwelling into this four million US dollar home with a view. And the ultimate private gym on the third floor. 
You can obviously see around here that this is a very typical uh, overseas Chinese or expatriate home. It's 2,100 square feet, it's got a rooftop gym, jacuzzi, it's got the full works. And what I'm going to show you now is a huge contrast in Hong Kong to something about 20 seconds away if we run. So come on. This is a huge extreme. Remember what I just said, four million US dollar home, swimming pool, jacuzzi, gym. Now look at what we're approaching now, okay? Old villager home. These people, they've been here for generations. They've lived here without electricity, although these days they've got cable TV, not surprisingly. This plot itself, you could probably need to buy for about one and a half million US dollars and these people are living in. You can see what these people are living in. I'll probably get shouted at in a minute. Oh, I'm getting barked at anyway. If you were to build two homes on here, you're probably looking at something in the region of seven, eight million US dollars for this property here. And they've got their own little vegetable patch. I mean, it's really, really going back in, in, in time here. Obviously, this, this home's been here for probably 50, 60 years, but these families have been living here for generations, Ding families, local indigenous Chinese families, and all up around them now are Maseratis and Ferraris and people buying expensive homes, but this is the kind of contrast we're talking about. But as laid back as this area seems, there's also a lot of money coming in from mainland China. What a vast turnaround since 1997. Okay, so what we're we looking at here, we've got a real contrast of a brand new house over here and an old fishing village that's uh, inhabited by a bunch of people called Po, right? That's right, old Po's. So what, what, what kind of value would that be now? Uh, spectacular locations, probably about four million US. Wow. And the ones at the top, they have views over the other side of Clearwater Bay, spectacular views of the beach. And the ones at the back here have the view over this way. They're probably about two to two and a half to three million US. And I think um, this village here will eventually get taken over and rebuilt, and then they'll go for similar prices, uh, three to four million US. So I think we can pretty much guarantee that in a couple of years we come back here and we'll have three or four houses on here very much similar to that one there. And that's the nature of Hong Kong now. And if you remember the background of Hong Kong, it actually started as a fishing village. So some irony really that we're still here in fishing villages, but we're going to be looking at four or five million US dollar pads uh, where you can actually get in your boat uh, and row or sail or motorboat across to have your seafood dinner, which is just uh, quite incredible. So what have we learned? either buy small units in the city and renovate, or take advantage of cheaper land values in the countryside. Interest rates are low and mortgages are readily available. The legal system is transparent, foreigner friendly, and the currency is pegged to the US dollar. When it comes to land, there's not much of it, so you can always find a buyer and a tenant. Finally, the income tax is low and capital gains tax is non-existent. So all in all, I'd give Hong Kong a solid thumbs up. Most people come to Hong Kong to make money. I certainly did all those years ago. But once you get here, this place gets into your DNA, into your very soul, and you never want to leave. So beware, if you invest in property in Hong Kong, you may be here a very long time. Next week on Buy in Asia, I'll show you the phenomenal real estate story that is Vietnam. I'm here in Da Nang, fifth biggest city in the country, growing economically at 20% a year. Great for local manufacture and the best road system in the country. But the real big story here is tourism and what's going on in China Beach. It might not be Hong Kong yet, but as I learn, their ambition is sky high while property here is a secret that's about to be let out of the bag. I'm Tim Murphy on Buying Asia, one brick at a time.